What is going on guys? Welcome to Homecraft Cocktails. Cocktails you can make from the comfort of your home. My name is Briss and you might have noticed that the audio might be a little different, hopefully better. Um, I got a new microphone recently, um, so hopefully it should make the audio when I'm speaking sound even better than usual. And you know, I'll be tinkering and, and changing things over the next you know coming episodes. So just something to be aware of. But with that out of the way, this week's cocktail, we'll be going over one of my favorites, the pork cobbler. Now the pork cobbler in and of itself does not really have a lot of history tied to it, but it's more popular uh, cousin, the sherry cobbler, has some origin history behind it. So we'll be going over that today. So back around the 19th century, uh, wine was a very much sought after product during this time period in America. And mixed drinks, especially the mint julep, were the drinks of choice from about 1810 to 1830. Somewhere along the lines of the 1830s, the sherry cobbler was born, a uh, bartender unknown, but once that drink was created, it would begin to dominate the cocktail scene in the tail end of the 1830s. The first reference to a cobbler was back in the 1838 diary of a one Catherine Jane Ellis. She was a Canadian diarist, which I just learned that word today, an artist who chronicled the drink when she came across it in the USA. The Sherry Cobbler also appears in the very first book that was targeted specifically to bartenders, Jerry Thomas's 1862, The Bartender's Guide. After Prohibition hit, just like so many other cocktails, the cocktail never quite hit the popularity that it once had. Still, the drink is fairly known to this day and has produced a family of different cobblers such as the Whiskey Cobbler, the Champagne Cobbler, the Hot Cobbler, and today's Port Cobbler. So, with that brief hiss lesson out of the way, let's get down to actually making the drink. So first off, we're gonna start by adding half of a lemon and half of an orange to the shaker. Yeah, I'm gonna make these pieces even smaller since these are so, <laughs> so big. Next, we're gonna pour three fourths of an ounce of orange curacao into the shaker. Then we're gonna add an ounce of water. So I have some filtered water here from our Brita. There we go. Then you're gonna muddle the shaker. After muddling, then we're gonna add crushed ice into the shaker. Then we're gonna add four ounces of ruby port. And today we are using Taylor Port wine, which seemed to had a huge craze about it. Like what, last year, 2022, I think. Better find me some smoke, ain't I? Damn! I'm drunk in the mug, ain't I? G, huh? Thank you, yeah, man. What you and I'm, I don't know why. I've been drinking this since like 2018, but Hey, it is what it is. And we had just enough for four ounces there, so. <laughs> this might uh, spill a little when we shake it. So next we're gonna shake and then strain into an old fashioned glass. Okay, so quick note here, I just wanted to make in this video. Um, after the fact, I realized I completely missed a step in the recipe that I was following. As you see here, it says add crushed ice to the old fashioned glass. So do not repeat the same mistake I did. You will want to add ice to your glass before straining. Otherwise, it'll be warmer than you like. So just FYI. And lastly, we're going to garnish with an orange slice and a lemon slice. And there we have a pork cobbler. And now that we have our drink, let's give it a taste. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm gonna be honest, I have not made this drink since like the prime days of the pandemic. I'm talking like late 2020, maybe like early 2021, I think. And it's just as good as I remember. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure when I was making it 
how exactly I had made it before, but it seems about right. The only thing that I think is missing is like ice in the glass itself. The recipe I was following uh, didn't call for having ice in the old fashioned glass, but it would help, I think, if there was actually ice in the glass just for that chill factor. Also, the recipe that I was going off of called for a pineapple wedge as well as the lemon slice and orange slice that we use. So I don't know how to they would make that all fit unless they were to use like a like maybe a mixing glass like this maybe i don't know it seems like it would be a lot to do half of an orange half of a lemon and a pineapple wedge all the muddle i mean i don't know maybe they made it work somehow that i just don't know how to do but yeah i nixed the pineapple wedge all together and just used the orange and the lemon and in terms of how the cocktail looks, I would say it looks pretty good, even though I didn't do the best job at its presentation today. Um, I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do it with the lemon slice and the orange slice, so I kind of just put the orange slice on the rim and just dropped the lemon slice in there. I don't know. You know, garnishes are, you know, they don't change how the drink tastes in most cases. Um, so in this instance, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm sure when I actually take pictures, or rather when my fiance takes pictures, she's gonna make it look much better than this, so. That aside, you do see the ruby um, color to the cocktail, you know, obviously from the ruby port wine that we use. So it does have that sense of uniqueness from that. But yeah, all in all, I mean, if you like sangrias, this is not too far of a, off of a sangria. You know, you have wine, check, fruit, check, uh, orange liqueur, check. It's very, very similar to, to, to a sangria. So if you like sangrias, you're gonna love, I think, almost any cobbler that you test. So thank you guys for watching this week's episode, and I'll catch you next week for the next round. Peace.